And welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I know it's been a while since the last KSP video, and uh, all I can say is that I've been busy with a number of things. But, as you can see, the space station is still in orbit. Not only have the two small landers been attached, as you saw in a previous video, but the heavy landers have also been attached. One of which was docked during a live stream yesterday. And I'll provide a link for that live stream if you like. It's in the description. And the first two hours of that three hour live stream is the mission I flew to dock one of these heavy landers to the space station including uh, a couple of false starts and a need for a couple of quick trips into the VAB to fix a couple of things. But the mission went fine. It was a complete success. And that gives you an idea, by the way, of uh, the amount of stuff that I would normally edit out of a video that was still in the uh, live stream, of course is uh, th there's a lot of waiting involved in orbital maneuvers, especially when you're waiting to catch up with uh, something else in a slightly higher orbit, and you're working in a, rel in a low enough orbit that you can't go faster than 50x time acceleration. So, the station is really shaping up. We've got our two light landers, our two heavy landers, and... I've been thinking about something, and the whole time, the fact that this thing is saddled with a mainsail for its main engine has never really quite sat well with me. I didn't particularly like the idea, because the mainsail is a good engine for getting off the ground, doing a injection burn to the moon or Minmus. But really, it's not really extremely well suited for deep space operation and not having nearly as high a specific impulse as the nuclear engine or atomic engine or whatever they want to call it. So, if you may recall, let me switch. Actually, I don't need to do that. I can go to the map view and... Here it is right here, if I can just select it. Okay. Currently named Station 2, it was originally intended to replace part of the station. And I don't recall right now without re-watching the video exactly why I decided to not continue the attempt and instead I parked it here and renamed it Station 2. But basically what's supposed to happen is this whole assembly is to rendezvous with the space station and then the large tank with the mainsail attached would undock from the space station because it's connected by a docking port. It would simply undock and then this would approach this uh, small robot ship would undock from this and just kind of park nearby this part would then dock with that fuel tank and transfer all the fuel out of it into this fuel tank and after that it would undock from the empty stage and turn around and dock with the space station where that one piece was. Once that is accomplished, this robot would move in, dock with the empty fuel module, uh, stage, section, whatever, and deorbit the thing because it's got just enough fuel and RCS and so on being designed specifically to deorbit that empty thing. And uh, like I said, I don't really recall quite why it is I decided not to continue with the attempt. 
but I'm going to give it a try now because I still think it's a good idea. So we'll set the space station as target. First thing we want to check is orbital alignment. And oh yeah. Alignment looks good. We even have an intersect. 452 kilometers on the next the next time uh, the ship passes this point. So I'm going to put my focus on Kerbin. Warp time ahead at 50x. And I'm going to cut back in when we're at a close enough approach to begin rendezvous maneuvers. All right. Several hours of uh, mission time and several orbits have uh, passed. And right now, our closest approach is now at 17.6 kilometers. And our current position is 18.5 kilometers from the ship. Okay, we've got ourselves in target mode. Let's, let's get rotated around. Actually, no, wait a minute, we are facing the right direction. That is the retrograde marker. Okay. Get in position to cancel our relative velocity. And begin approaching. Basically what's happened here is that, or going to happen, or is happening, is that by the time with this position, see we've already, we've passed the space station. And by the time we get to here, we will start going farther away from it, I expect. So, cancel relative velocity. Right when the station is 17.6 kilometers away. And then begin approaching for a rendezvous. 18.1 and closing. Let's time warp just a little bit. Seventeen point six point five. Oh, we're getting closer. Good. Point four. Point three. Let's keep it in view. Point one. Okay, good. We're closing. Sixteen point nine. All right, let's close to about ten kilometers. if we can. Okay, point 0.9. It was at point 0.8, I'm pretty sure. See what goes back to 7. Okay, all right. We are at the optimum position, or actually a little past it. We're about as close as we're going to get without getting farther away. So we line up. And we kill our relative velocity before it gets much higher. And begin approaching. Okay. Engage engines. Kill the relative velocity. Try to keep that marker centered. All right, now let's rotate around facing the target and begin an approach.
All I can say is I must have been having a bad day in some way if I chose not to attempt this. I think 20 meters per second should be sufficient. In fact, let's attempt docking mode and some lateral translation to... Well, it will help if I enable the thrusters. Uh, I can see where we might have a problem here. We are using monoprop like crazy. Let's see here. I'm pretty sure I know why, too. Because there's thrusters here and here, and even on this little tub, but there's none down here. Right, first of all, let's go ahead and refill this. And then disable it. So that one won't burn any fuel, at least. This one is dangerously low. So we're just going to have to see if we can't... ...maybe fly this without docking mode. We'll see. Now I can see where this is going to be a problem. Alright. Docking mode. SAS off. RCS on. And because the thrusters are all at that end of the ship, they just want to rotate. Something that would need to be rethought. I'm curious. Oh, it does have parachutes. Okay, so worst come to worst, we can deorbit this thing, maybe do some redesign and try it again. This thing needs lateral thrusters on it. And it doesn't have them. So maybe that might just be the thing to do. Deorbit this thing and launch a new one that's got lateral thrusters all along the length of it. Because without being able to have uniform lateral thrust, there's no way to... I mean, docking with anything would be sheer luck. Okay. Let's do that. 
We'll bring this thing down, redesign it, and we'll try it again. In either case, it won't be cluttering our skies anymore. Okay, we'll just time warp this thing down. I guess we can close the solar panels on the uh, tub. And for that matter, since we're on a re-entry trajectory, we'll just go ahead and undock this thing. And it will re-enter on its own now. And I'll go ahead and uh, we also can undock that tank. It is no longer necessary. A little bit of thrust, pull away from it. Now we'll time warp as much as we're allowed to get this thing down. And of course, as is usual for me, this aspect of the mission is happening at night. Um, could have sworn that was a parachute module, but it doesn't seem to be.
That was ugly. I could have sworn that was a parachute module. It was on the symbol over here, I'm pretty sure of it. Oh. I hate that because I hate having Kerbals killed in action. Wait a minute. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Back to the Space Center. Vehicle Assembly Building. And we'll get working on a new design.